Uh, my name is Bob Schnitzer. Uh, my name is Jim Wurtz. Dr. Beverly Wesley. Well, my name is Dennis Mutterman. I was a, yeah, what would you call it? A, a substitute teacher, I guess, for the physics department. And I was teaching introductory physics and introductory astronomy uh, when uh, Moorhead got to put in the planetarium. And so I was the first director of the planetarium. I'm a retired professor of physics and astronomy at Moorhead State. Uh, taught there from uh, September of 1968 until November of 1994. I got a degree in uh, biology from, from Moorhead State. And um, my role in the planetarium was support staff. Um. And after I'm an alum from Moorhead State University, which is where I met Walter, he was teaching physics and I had to take, take physics. I was 10 years older than average, mm -hmm. so, so don't get too excited. It wasn't <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> and, um, and then gra graduated, we got married. And, and so the, the planetarium came about. Walter taught a lot of different things. And I was... Uh, here running the planetarium about spring uh, 1979 uh, until about May um, 1983. And I had gotten a uh, physics degree at Concordia and was real involved with astronomy there and astronomy education and, uh, and the astronomy club, which met occasionally in the planetarium. Uh, my background is that I'm a theoretical physicist. My PhD is actually in general relativity and cosmology, which is another way of saying that I'm useless to all of humanity. The planetarium must have been an early idea of his as much as we traveled and, and never missed looking at a planetarium. The uh, years that it was here, you know, very, it's a very wonderful job running a planetarium. A lot of different things. I came to Moorhead State in uh, 68. There was one uh, astronomy course offered by the math department. The physics department didn't have it at that time. And uh, the, the building that the planetarium is in, I guess, had been uh, constructed a few years before that. And they had already an idea that they wanted a planetarium. And so they included a room that was large enough to contain a, a 30 foot diameter planetarium. I said, I just guess I didn't get involved in any meetings, but once they had the ball, I mean the sky globe and the building, then they were doing programs. I know Walter did public programs Jim probably did some public programs, and students did too, Mary Jane and Virginia, um, as well as building it into the astronomy classes. Well, it was, it was kind of interesting. I mean, I think one of the big issues gets to be kind of the technology, which is a really bit different. Uh, the planetariums at that time were the, a lot of them and around the state and area were the Spitz 512, which you know, that's monolithic thingy in the center of the room with, uh, you know, holes or stars and in a lot of cases, little lenses. Uh, we eventually hired a planetarium director and he he was in charge of the planetarium and he, he would develop uh, different planetarium programs to present to the general public. I was pretty much the director of the planetarium. I was the only one that, that taught uh, astronomy and uh, broadly introductory physics of this sort at that time. There was a discussion over whether or not we should have public shows, that kind of thing that was going on. It was basically in use for uh, classroom activity.
So it was essentially a uh, class activity and introduction to astronomy. Uh, and we were using that for observational astronomy, of course. That was the purpose of it. I, I firmly believe that because it, it does allow you to have this artificial sky uh, and you can, well, you can use it as we, as we do for the uh, general astronomy course. And you can also use it to develop these programs for the general public. And uh, there's quite a bit of, there's always been quite a bit of interest. Yeah, astronomy is kind of a unique area. I mean, I, I think to be able to immerse someone in a good night sky and um, there's, you know, there's the science of astronomy, which you can really show and demonstrate and teach. But there's also the, you know, art and lore of astronomy. Uh, well, it's, when I think of, of stars, I think of the future as well as the past. I mean, it, it includes the entire, entirety of, um, it's not human existence, it's existence, period. And I think that's what, what people need to know and often don't know, is that, that this is what makes life in the universe go. It can be very useful, actually, in many respects. Uh, the planetarium, I think, is a, a very good public teaching tool, perhaps, is the way I would describe it. Uh, it is of interest because it, you know, it has an interesting appearance. You can see things. You can put on intriguing shows. And you can uh, create science shows for a broader audience. I'm, I'm not an educator and not an academic, but um, I certainly do agree with uh, the notion that planetariums are important. Um, we need as much STEM education as we can out there. Uh, and planetariums are, are part of that, definitely. Absolutely. My, in my experience, um, I, I got my education in the late 60s, early 70s in, in college. And uh, at that time, there was no very little questioning or second guessing of science facts and science notions and, and events. Uh, I talk to a lot of young people nowadays, and they have a skepticism of science, really. Jim, Dr. Wirtz, and Walter, and I thought there was a third person, went to New York to pick out the sky globe oh. that was going to be put into the planetarium. Okay. And I remember that, and um, they were so excited, and it was so wonderful. You know, and that's one of my favorite memories of the planetarium when it was all ready and Walter took just me over once to show it to me. Yeah. Was the sky globe came up out of a pit. Mm -hmm. It was buried. Mm -hmm. And it was like, have you seen the movie? What's the movie where this big monolith comes up and the, the apes are beating around it? Yeah, 2001. Oh, 2001. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Out of, yep. And that's... Every time I saw the, the, planet, the sky globe come up, mm -hmm. I thought of that. The final exam uh, was, I thought, kind of fun, actually. What we did is we had students come one at a time into the planetarium. And he would tell you to close your eyes. And he would, you could hear them moving the projector around. We would turn on all three axes of the planetarium motor. So the sky moved more or less at random. We let it uh, run for a period of time and then turn it off and say, okay, if it's uh, 10 o'clock at night, where in the world are you? Dr. Wirtz was very uh, ingenious about how he could mess up that projector so that you didn't know where you were. <laughs> it makes for a very interesting final exam, very challenging on the whole, but a lot of fun. Uh, that summer when I developed those two public presentations, 
Uh, I really enjoyed doing that. I think there's a lot of interest in the general public in astronomy and uh, and space flight and all the related uh, technologies. So I think that's not only not only is it useful to Moorhead State, but yeah, also for the community and for the external community uh, because. It, it lends itself very well to putting on very interesting programs like that and presenting them to the general public. Uh, I, would, I would say there's a huge role that planetariums can play introducing um, K through 12 students to the night sky if they haven't uh, had experience with an actual telescope. Um, uh, that would be my primary hope is that there'd be some improvement in uh, respect for science uh, and the scientific method. I think it's, it's uh, among a range of cultural things that really are important to a community. Theater and uh, museums and um, all that is is kind of important, and uh, you know I think it was. I mean, it's just I think in the mix of those kind of things that that contributes to the culture of of, of the, a local community. I would say that there is a very real purpose there, because it can bring uh, bring to life what is otherwise, in many respects, uh, what most people regard as a relatively dull conversation, can give it life. Mm -hmm. And that helps tremendously. You would like people to truly understand what the universe around us is like. And it is a very intriguing place, to say the least. Well, giving them an opportunity to see what's going on in the universe and participating in that. And I know school kids go there regularly. And I, I think it's wonderful, and especially starting children young. But I think it offers a, a beautiful experience to visit our universe.